All right, Algebra 2, here we go. Today's material is hard and it's tedious, but there's nothing really new here. It's just once again rearranged. So if this was first semester, I'd be panicking and being like, oh my God, we can't do this. Oh, no, 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 no. But the truth is we can do this. Um, it's a little rough and it's very easy to get discouraged because you can make little tiny mistakes with negatives here and there. But um, just keep at it because it's something we can do. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the main lecture today. Uh, the main lecture today is a reminder, essentially, of what um, division is. Now, these notes, y'all know how I am about notes. Math notes are overwhelming. They, even for math teachers, when we look at this, it's overwhelming. And so I don't need you to look at this and understand this right away. These are This is a reference sheet. This is what you come back after the lecture and then be like, hey, can I see, do I understand what these notes are saying now? They're kind of nice. If you know what these notes are saying after the lecture, that's how you know what's going on. But I consider these references, not the teaching materials. So with that said, let me go ahead and get into this. You need to remember what long division is. You need to remember what long division is. And here we go. So this is an example right here. Um, let's say I had 24 divided by 6. Long division is when you set it up this way. This sucker, what is it called? The divisor. The divisor right there. That's a lovely box. This is a divisor. The divisor goes here. All right. The quotient, this is the thing we find on top, goes on top. The dividend goes inside. So 6 is what we're dividing by. 24 is what's getting divided. And then when we find our answer, this sucker, 4 times 6, gives me 24. I have to subtract it because that's the way we do it. Remainder 0. So what we find for our answer is 4 remainder 0. Now, when we have a remainder zero, we don't typically write out remainder zero, but just reminding you those terminologies. So um, let's get into it. This is an example of it, but I'm going to go ahead and work on number one. And, it, and this is, like I said, I think this is really, really tricky, but it's kind of fun when you get into it. I mean, math teacher fun, not like real fun, but, you know, fun enough. Uh, OK, so here's all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, one thing I want to show you is this bizarre answer right here before we get started. So this was the problem they gave us right here. And you can see how they set it up. And, and I'm going to teach you this process. Don't freak out. It's not as scary as it looks. And they ended up finding the answer was x plus 6 right here, x plus 6. But then they had a remainder of 6 afterwards, which is bizarre. But look what they did. They put the remainder on top, and they put the divisor. Let me make sure I got the right language down. They put the divisor. That's, in this case, the x minus 3. I'll switch colors so you can see it. Whoosh, whoosh. I'm calling your attention to it now because you don't always get perfect answers here. So um, just showing you that there's multiple steps. Um, might have been out of order, but I'm going to go to the next problem. I'm going to actually work a problem. So let me show you the whole point of what this thing does. We're basically, you know how we've been doing this whole factoring thing over and over where it's like, okay, guys, we see an x squared. Now you need to do that whole ABC thing. So you're like, oh, great. Here comes an ABC crap over and over again. And it never goes away follows you to every math class. We found that our A was 1, we found that our B was 6, we found that our C was 8, and we found that our AC was also 8. We're looking for numbers that molt to AC and add to B. And when I'm done with that, I can find the answer. 4 times 2, 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the spoiler. The spoiler I'm going to give is, that's a 2, wow, that's a lovely 2. The spoiler is, I found 4 plus 2, 4 and 2 as my uh, factors. So I'm going to end up with x plus 4 and x plus 2. So this is the actual answer to the problem. But obviously, we want you to actually learn long division. Long division is necessary because sometimes you can't divide things out prettily. So we need a universal method. So long division is the universal method for factoring polynomials. Polynomial, that term right there. So let's get into it. Uh, it says, determine whether x plus 4 is a factor of each polynomial. What that means is, and check this out, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to go ahead down here. I'm going to switch to blue. What that means is, I'm going to put my x plus 4 as the divisor. I'm going to put it right there. And then I have x squared plus 6x plus 8 that goes into that thing. So here's this part, this big problem. And it's asking, is this a factor? i.e., can x plus 4 divide into this evenly? Can we break it down? Can I put x plus 4 into this? And if I can, what do I have as my factor? So we already broke it down. We already know that this 
and this right here are the same thing, but now we're gonna do it a different way. So I'm gonna switch to some purple, and here's how this works. You're gonna take this first term and you're gonna look at this first term. In this case, this is one X and one X squared. So how many times does this X go into X squared? In this case, it goes in X times. But you'll notice why I wrote it. You see how I put it there? Do you see this X squared at X matching? No, I don't see that. You wanna line up your variables as much as possible. So there's my X. Now watch this process. I go X times X, which is X squared. And then I go X times four, which is plus four X to positive four. And now this is the part that gets tricky. You have to subtract this. You have to subtract this. So when you end up subtracting it, it means the signs change. So this goes X squared minus X squared. So when you see that, that's gonna end up being zero because X squared minus X squared. Now this is six X plus four X, but look y'all, you have to take this negative sign, this one right here, that one right here, and you have to basically put it right here. You have to do that. So what happens when that takes place, when you distribute this, this actually turns into a negative. So when that happens, now you have six minus four, which gives me two X. All right, and now you can see, let's check everything's lined up. So everything's lined up now. We have our X's and our X column. My X squared column is here. Everything looks really good to go. Um, so we've done this work now. Um, now I'm gonna do this. Six X minus four X gives us two X. Uh, and then, yeah, now we're at this place. So what happens next? Do you see this eight over here? Everything that's left over that hasn't been touched in the top needs to become pulled down. In this case, we only have a plus eight to put. So I'm gonna do the plus eight right here. And then guess what? We have to start this process all over again. So now I'm gonna look at this X and I see this two X and I'm gonna say X goes into two X two times. It goes into X two times. Two times X is two X. Two times four is eight. And then we're subtracting this whole thing, which means I have to subtract it and change the signs. Oops, I have to change the signs in real time. So two X minus two X is zero. And then eight minus this eight, remember we gotta turn this, eight minus eight ends up being zero as well too. So now check it out, we've done this, we have a remainder of zero. So let me look at my answer, I'm gonna put it together for you. The answer that I have then, what I find is I have this one, my divisor is X plus four, all right, nice. And then look at the top up here, I have X plus two, all right, nice. And then we have a, down here, a remainder of zero. We have a remainder of zero. So remainder of zero. And again, we don't really write remainder of zero. So you don't have to be like, hey, mister, it's a remainder of zero. I'm not gonna require this on every problem. But what do you notice? Check it out. what did we find when we factored it earlier the other way? And then look what we found when we did it this way. The reason why long division exists is because it's a universal method that works and it helps you, it helps mathematicians in general. Um, because not every number in the real world is perfect. Not every number is gonna work out pretty. So that is essentially the main lecture and how to do this. There is no easy way to get this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out and then I'm gonna do example B. And I think that's all I'm gonna do for this example right now. All right, one more video.